It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. A report prepared by Republican staff of the Financial Services Committee was released on Monday stating that Eric Holder, the former attorney general, ignored recommendations of the Justice De Department prosecutors to charge the UK-based HSBC bank for money laundering. The report states that Department of Justice officials thought prosecuting the bank could result in global financial disaster. It is also being reported that UK Chancellor George Osborne was also implicated in preventing a prosecution against HS HSBC. Now, HSBC was accused of being used by drug cartels to launder money. They also engage in financial transactions with countries under sanction by the US, like Iran, Libya, and Cuba. To discuss all of this, I'm being joined joined by Bill Black. Bill is an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white collar criminologist and former financial regulator and author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thank you for joining us, Bill. Thank you. So, Bill, tell us about the gravity of this issue, uh, Holder ignoring the recommendations of his own department prosecutors. So there are two stories in this. One is that, the uh, substance, and the second uh, is uh, the rather curious um, moves of the Republicans uh, is in Congress about all of this. Substantively, HSBC was one of the two or three largest banks in the world uh, at the time it was doing this. It uh, laundered money for uh, at least a decade. Uh, it uh, did so uh, primarily in Mexico for the Sinaloa cartel, um, and it uh, did so to the tune of at least a billion dollars. Um, it, it, uh, HSBC's uh, Mexican operations were so much part of the criminal uh, enterprise, so much part of the Sinaloa cartel, that the cartel actually built specialized boxes to transfer the cash uh, that exactly fit the teller cages <laughs> in your <laughs> things like your drive up windows and such, right? So, <laughs> uh, this was something where uh, hundreds of uh, HSBC officials knew that this was going on. It was a principal part of the operations of uh, HSBC in Mexico. And as you say, on top of that, um, if you wanted to come back to the Republicans for a moment, if you wanted to really play this up, you'd say, hey, HSBC is providing funds to Libya, to Iran. Uh, it is supporting terrorism, it is supporting the creation, allegedly, of nuclear weapons, et cetera, et cetera, right? It would be a really good issue uh, for the Republicans and, you know, guess who was Secretary of State uh, during much of this time. Substantively as well, there's a wonderful scandal in all of this. And the wonderful scandal, uh, from the standpoint of the Republicans, is the Democrats were in power. And Eric Holder, despite recommendations from the professional prosecutors, and despite the fact that HSBC, you know, these are not alleged facts, HSBC has admitted these facts, right? Uh, despite this, one of the largest drug laundering operations in world history, one of the longest drug operations, money laundering operations in world history. Holder refused to prosecute, and he claimed that there was no basis for prosecuting. Now, that never made any sense, as I said, because <laughs> it's kind of a problem for that, that HSBC is, in fact, admitting uh, all the elements of the felony. And supposedly no one could be prosecuted, even though they admit uh, the facts. Um, but uh, Holder kept um, secret the fact that he had reversed the recommendation of the professionals. How did he, he keep kept, that secret? Well, the Republicans alleged by lying uh, in his congressional testimony about the HSBC settlement. So let me go briefly to the weirdness from the Republican side, right? So the Republicans have been trying desperately to find something to attack Obama with forever. And they've been really desiring something that attacks Obama 
and potentially Hillary Clinton for obvious reasons. And this is the, a perfect one, right? It's got all the elements helping uh, people uh, launder for the uh, Mexican cartel with all the, you know, the Trumpy stuff about Mexico. Uh, it's got uh, terrorism. It's got nuclear weapons. It's got Iran. You, you, you say the words Libya. Uh, these are the, all the things the Republicans theoretically would want to say. But they have been silent on the failure to prosecute, overwhelmingly. There are few exceptions, Grassley in a committee. Notice also, as you uh, correctly said, that this is a leaked report to the Wall Street Journal. Well, that's no surprise, that happens all the time, but from the Republican staff only. Now, if you're a wonk, you know that the really great congressional stuff uh, on the run-up to this crisis uh, was done uh, by Senator Levin. And it was done by Senator Levin with different uh, Republican counterparts, but always jointly. And they produced joint reports. And those, of course, have far more credibility uh, than a leaked report that is only from one side of the staff. So this, again, is the Republicans are unwilling to work with the Democrats, but also you know, if they tried, they got um, no uh, no one willing to go with them on the Democratic side. Um, HSBC, on top of that, is the case that was handled uh, by uh, Loretta Lynch's office. And, of course, she's now uh, Eric Holder's successor. And not only should HSBC have been prosecuted, uh, and as these uh, documents show. And Didn't by the way, she documents... actually assist HSBC in this case? Well, a different attorney at uh, the Office of Foreign Asset Control. Now, those are the sanction people, right? And you talked about the sanctions. No sanctions are against funding for groups that we uh, believe to be terrorists. And with regard to Iran, it was funding that we thought could lead to the development of nuclear weapon. Again, those are, if you're from a Republican standpoint, that's ideal kind of stuff, right? Um, so the Office of Foreign Asset Control attorney, they have documents because uh, they being Congress, um, this is the House Financial Services Committee, and it, more precisely, it's the majority, which is to say the Republicans. Jeb Henserling is the chairman. They have those documents because they subpoenaed them from the Treasury Department, and the Treasury Department complied with the subpoena. The Justice Department refused to comply with the subpoena. So again, in Republican politics, this is great, right? A cover-up by the Department of Justice of a cover-up. Um, meanwhile, you get the key, some of the key facts from Treasury, and they show that this um, Office of Foreign Asset Control person, who you would normally expect to be a hawk on anything involving sanctions, is actually fighting against bringing a criminal prosecution. And shortly after that, she leaves the government, and I know it will shock you, but she ends up working for HSBC. On top of that, as you said, you have all the folks at Treasury being implored by Osborne, who was the equivalent, the British equivalent of the Secretary of the Treasury and the number two guy in power in the Tory party uh, as well, saying you must not prosecute HSBC because it's too big to prosecute. It will cause devastating harm to the world economy. Now, that's complete BS. Uh, and obviously, what can cause harm to the global economy is having one of the largest banks in the world be a criminal enterprise that is working hand in glove with one of the largest drug cartels in the world and with the Libyan uh, folks and the Iranian folks to avoid sanctions, right? That would be how you would screw up the world, um, not removing the crooks from HSBC. Well, what did the Justice Department do after Holder killed the prosecution? They did one of these, you know, non-prosecution, allegedly deferred prosecution agreements. But except, you know, deferred means never. Um, it's a, one of those stupid euphemisms. And we know that because uh, the, as part of these agreements, you get a monitor. And that monitor reported that HSBC was not fully complying. 
and Loretta Lynch and her successors um, have refused to prosecute even with that. And on top of that, the Panama disclosures and other disclosures showed that HSBC was engaged in massive violations, uh, again, in basically money laundering type activities to help the wealthiest folks in many countries, HSBC operates uh, globally, um, escape and evade taxes that they owe. So they're at least three time losers, liars, uh, after this settlement, where supposedly because their extraordinary copper cooperation, some cooperation, right, a, a, after a decade of massive uh, frauds and they're caught red handed, they supposedly cooperate. Well, we've now seen that they haven't under the deferred prosecution agreements. We could have used their admissions against them prosecuted them much more easily, and the Justice Department has continued to refuse. And all those claims that Holder, remember Holder testified that uh, he thought that some banks were too big to prosecute. And then he walked that back within a couple of days because he got such severe criticism. Well, now it comes out, that's exactly what's uh, been going on, uh, that they view these as uh, too big uh, to uh, jail and that it's not just here in the United States, that they work with the city of London. And of course, where are the two biggest financial centers in the world? And it ain't close. Uh, they would be Wall Street and the city of London. And that's why we have this ability to rig the system to get incredibly wealthy as CEOs of these banks with complete impunity from criminal laws. So now the question is, what are the Republicans going to do with this? And what are the Democrats going to do with this? It's the perfect Republican issue, but of course it's embarrassing to a whole lot of Republican supporters in terms of the massive banks who are major political contributors, uh, both to uh, Hillary uh, and to the Republican Party uh, traditionally. So are we going to get more of this sort of conspiracy of silence uh, or are the Republicans actually going to try to make this a major issue? Now, Bill, one quick question for you. Didn't this come up in Loretta Lynch's conf confirmation hearings? Some of it came up, but not very hard. Again, it, it, the clear thing is, as opposed to all kinds of other uh, congressional investigations, which have had no merit to very little merit and little ability to embarrass uh, Obama. This is the perfect one for embarrassing Obama. And it's a good one for embarrassing Hillary Clinton. It is a wonderful one for embarrassing the Attorney General, Loretta, Loretta Lynch, who they are going after uh, because of her, her uh, decision not to prosecute and because of her unfortunate meeting with Bill Clinton, right? So it's the great Republican issue. They should be screaming about it with all of their surrogates every day. They should be demanding an investigation and they control Congress. They can actually, they have subpoena authority. They could be going after and the, the Democrats obstructed the, those investigations. The Democrats would pay heavily, but they haven't ever gone. Not only have the Republicans not gone full force, you know, on a scale of one to 10, this is about 0. 0.0001 historically that the Republicans have been willing to complain about the Democrats' failure to prosecute uh, the uh, banksters. Um, we'll see. We'll wait and see, and the Republicans should give you a fee for this report. I thank you so much for joining, joining us today, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.